Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and today I have another quick look review for you and this time it is the Airfix 148th Bolt and Pull Defiant NF1 and this will be the subject of another modelling for beginner series as you may have seen uh, in the chatterbox video released the other day. Okay so this kit then was released by Airfix as a brand new tool in 2016 it's already eight years old i can't really believe that <laughs> time seems to fly faster and faster as i get older so far then airfix have released this kit three times since then the original boxing had two day fighter schemes in it this boxing was from t is is from 2017 and has as you can see two night fighter schemes within and in 2020 the kit was released yet again and this time with one of each scheme included it isn't currently available at airfix.com uh, although it is listed with a current retail of 28.99 but the more recent boxing from 2020 certainly seems to be generally fairly easily available online um, for sort of £25 and less so it's pretty reasonably priced actually I got this one second hand a little while ago I think I paid about £20 for it but I honestly can't clearly remember so what do we get within I have never had this kit before I have seen this because actually this is the second time I've filmed this review uh, because the first time I didn't have the microphone plugged in so it sounded like I was speaking from next year instead of sat right here at the bench so I'm doing it again so unfortunately I have actually seen this kit before uh, and the bags are gone and everything uh, but previous to buying this I hadn't seen the kit even though it's been out for eight years so inside then let's move the transparencies etc over here we basically get four grey plastic frames I've got to remember to call them frames Airfix say they're frames not sprues even mould it on there there we go let's start with frame A let's do this in order she says shuffling frames in the background there we go right so frame A then clearly contains the fuselage halves and a few assorted bits and pieces and we got some outboard wing sections there the big thing that strikes me straight away as someone I have built an awful lot of Airfix kits since shall we call it the renaissance of Airfix you know when they really popped up again and started being good <laughs> I have built a lot of their kits because I did for some years work as a regular contributor for Airfix Model World magazine so I built a lot of stuff in test shop form across that period and I have built the 72nd version of this kit as well uh, in fact I've built that twice and the thing that immediately leaps out at me when I look at this is that the surface of this is smooth and airfix are absolute sods for having rough pebbly grainy finishes on their kits I don't know why I don't know what the reason for it is but anyway this one isn't it's smooth really nicely smooth actually and the panel lines which is another thing that Airfix do cop a lot of flat for at times are really really nice they are on the larger side I will not uh, try and disguise that fact they are you know less subtle than the likes of Edward but they're not in any way horrid they're quite deep but they're very crisply moulded uh, this was when Airfix were still producing cow Zeus fasteners as donuts, uh, so they're going to have to go. And weirdly, the cowling parts are rougher than the rest of the finish. I'll bring that up there. I don't know if it's going to show on camera, but you can even see there seems like there's a colour difference even. It's the texture. It, it's rougher on the cowling for some reason. There's nothing a little bit of sanding can't sort out. And the moulding throughout, it, it's crisp, it's nice. There is edge flash, um, as your internal detail there, complete with some spectacular ejector pin marks there in the cockpit. Gotta love that. 
Um, edge flush is... I've just made that up. That's not an industry term, incidentally. Um, a lot of modern kits tend to put the mould seams where they have to have them on the edge of parts. So where you have a 90 degree edge, more often than not one of those edges, as, in the, as is the case here, is where the mould seam is. So you, end, you, you often end up with a little ridge, which this has. Got a little ridge on it. Uh, and a, just a touch of flash off the edge of things but it's very very easy to clean up so it really isn't actually worth complaining about so that's frame A frame B is very wingy so you don't have a full, spell, full span lower wing here you've got a centre section and the outers are on frame A but the uppers are full span which is nice Again, it's quite smooth, although not quite as smooth as the fuselage, but it's perfectly good enough. And the thing that struck me looking at these parts initially is ICM struck me. Um, so I'm a big fan of the large scale ICM biplane kits. I think they're fab. And chunky finesse is how I always sort of end up describing them. They're really quite clunky and, and big, the moulding. And a lot of the detail is kind of, it's kind of overdone, honestly, it's big. But it's moulded so beautifully and so crisply that it doesn't really matter and the kit just gets away with it. And this reminds me of that, these raised panels on the wings are just massively overdone. But they're very, very crisp, so it doesn't look terrible despite how big it is. That's my opinion anyway. Others may disagree. Here we have the main engine cowl. And again, it's got more texture than the rest of the parts on this frame. Um, and it's got some scarring down the sides here because it tapers away so much. And where the mould's been opened, it doesn't. It's got a bit of roughness and scarring. And also the raised Zeus fastener detail just doesn't work down there. It's kind of blobby. There's your wheel bay. There's a little bit of moulded in detail in there. Again, it's just very, very crisply done. And finally, fabric texture. Airfix are just nailing fabric texture for me, for my taste. Uh, it's, you see with this rudder, it's subtle. It's there for sure. But it's quite subtle and that's how it should be fabric covered aircraft you know they're not saggy in between the ribs and the structure they're, they're really taut the whole point of the finishes on the fabric covered aircraft is to tighten that fabric so that it doesn't sag <laughs> or wrinkle and the ribs are not massively pronounced um it's more like a drum than anything else um and so many manufacturers now just insist on reproducing rib tapes that you could trip over in real life and I, I really don't like it and it's a lot of work to get rid of it. This on the other hand is quite restrained, it's quite nice and if you wanted pronounced rib tapes it's actually very easy to put them on, a lot easier than it is to take them off if you don't want them. So getting into the smaller sprues, sorry frames, this is C obviously lots of uh, smaller more de detail-y sort of parts here uh, as you can see straight away there we've got a raised undercarriage option catered for with those one piece undercarriage doors which, which have spacers moulded into the back so they should fit nicely and we got lots of just general bits and pieces a radiator trough some some cockpit parts and turret parts as well Again, none of this is is uh, striking in its finesse, but it's cleanly moulded, if a little chunky. Look at the other side. A little bit of rivet detail and bits and pieces. Quite nice radiator mesh sort of detail on there. 
And lastly for the grey pieces, frame D. And this is just your finishing parts here. A little carburetor scoop, propeller, various bits and pieces. So the instrument panel does have raised detail. Again, it's chunky but crisp. Got some sidewall detail for the cockpit there, undercarriage legs obviously. And two types of exhaust, we've got a relatively round exit set this side and a more fishtaily type that side. Ne neither feature any world detail or have open exits, but again, they're crisply moulded. So the final set of plastic parts is the transparency frame. This one's E. And these are quite typically airfix. Uh, the frames are again quite crisply moulded and quite obvious, quite easy to mask airfix transparencies usually. Uh, so essentially we have a windscreen here and an open canopy option here. There's your closed canopy option and we also get open and closed turret options as well, which is nice. They are, they're not the most, um, they're not very optically perfect, let's put it that way. They're quite, there's quite a lot of distortion and ripples and bits and pieces and I can see the sort of hairline flaws that you get um, from the injection process occasionally. Um, I think with painted frames and once fitted they'll actually look perfectly fine. This closed canopy has actually got some nuggets on the surface, a couple of chips out of the mould possibly. You can see them there as those dots. But maybe you can see generally just that little bit of sort of distortion. I don't know. They look pretty good on the small screen that I can see. They're perfectly adequate. Um, just they're not amazing pop them back in the bag nice and safe and they were they are bagged separately but within the main bag of parts as is airfix normal way of doing things so here we have the instructions standard A4 booklet printed paper it's quite nice quality and in colour you've got your bit of history and specification block there. Assembly icons on the inside of the front cover as usual. Now I appreciate the whole thing doesn't fit under the camera but I'll just sort of try and keep it here. So we're going to keep things conventional and start with the cockpit first. And I hope it's uh, easy to see from this that although the parts count isn't massive it's building up into a relatively decent looking representation actually quite easily and very quickly we've got the fuselage halves closed and move on to the wings now those square structures my best guess is those are there to help the outer wings join the rest of the wing structure without too much floppiness as you can see here they overlap <laughs> they overlap the join where we add the um, outer wing panel so hopefully that's just there to so my assumption is that's just there to um, stabilize the thing so we fit the wing fit the control surfaces and the tail parts mind the staples then move quickly on to fitting the undercarriage which is very strutty you've got the main gear leg there and then two separate strut assemblies to add to that which will hold everything in position quite nicely the wheels so the wheels in this kit as again with most if not all more modern airfix offerings does have a flattened and slight bulged effect to represent the weight on the wheels Although aeroplanes fly, they're generally actually quite heavy. Uh, this whole page details the assembly of the turret. 
so there's quite a lot going on there which is nice because it's quite visible and here you've got your uh, opened up turret which you can see in more detail here or the closed version and you've got this intermediate piece between the canopies which can either be fitted in the uh, lowered position or up like that I'm not a defiant spurt by any means but I think that's just to reduce drag when the turret is not being used and likewise on the fuselage uh, spine this panel can also be fitted in a slightly raised manner or slightly slightly lowered down into the fuselage as well and then finally to finish it off just little bits and pieces the propeller the boarding step and just odds and sods to just finish the job there and down here at the bottom there's a little bit of information about the aerial so this aerial arrangement clearly doesn't work when it's on the ground so it would appear that the aft aerial is somewhat retractable and this little insert gives the measurements required to actually model that and that gets us into the marking schemes included so the first one and this is the one that will be built is for number 151 squadron based at RAF Wittering in February 1941 it is just overall black but it does feature a shark's mouth all the codes, serials, stencils etc are in dull red as you would expect second one and for your airfix typo this week I give you squadron leader Philip James Saunders of 264 Squadron at RAF Debden and Biggin Hill in late 1940 or early 1941. So this is a slightly later in iteration of the night fighter scheme. The roundel, fuselage roundel has been low vis to some extent and you've got medium C grey codes and serials rather than dull red. And the back page of the instruction booklet is the upside down stencil data thankfully not too many of those Jan doesn't like stencils and last but not least we have the decals so on the Mustang review that I did the other day I was waffling on about how airfix decals are really actually very good these days um, and are often printed by cartograph um, but it didn't say cartograph on the sheet itself in the Mustang kit and then someone pointed out in the comments that it did actually say cartograph on the box and they're quite right it does and so does this one it's this quite subtle little logo in the bottom corner of the lid so these decals are in fact printed by cartograph and they are genuinely really really good they're very very thin which is always a, a good start and a characteristic of these airfix decals is that the carrier film is trimmed insanely close to the colour so I mean really on these roundels you can't actually see it past the colour if I try and shine the light I think that will show you the carrier film is very very minimal yes it is on the serials there but you can see it's even been hogged out of the interior of the D and the P and the top of the S. Minimal carrier film. Really, really nice touch and indicative that the decal designer has got a clue what they're doing. Um, nice colour rendition, good saturation, good register, no dottiness, no, no silliness whatsoever. These are properly decent decals. I think long gone are the days where we buy an airfix kit and the next thing we do is go out and buy an aftermarket decal sheet it just isn't necessary they are genuinely very very good so there you go then that's your quick look review at the Bolton Paul Defiant LF1 in 48 from airfix and it does look a really genuinely very competent kit clearly 
it is not Tamiya Armour Hobby Edward level. I don't think they are marketed as such either, in fairness. But what it is, is a solid basis for a very, very decent replica to be built from. There's enough detail there for people who are happy to just build from the box and have a finished model on the shelf. And there's enough accuracy and general, general niceness on the kit to make it worth upgrading for those that want to do that. I am going to build this kit and it is going to feature on the channel very very soon in the form of a modelling for beginners series so if that interests you do keep an eye on the channel for that but in the meantime I'm happy from the look that I've had at this kit to recommend it even at full retail price it's not a bad price for what you're getting in the box uh, but they are generally available for a little bit less than the retail price anyway so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching and I hope it was useful and with all of that said, I think it only remains for me to say, until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other. Genesis out.